since Senator Joe Manchin has effectively killed the billionaire tax in the budget reconciliation bill. That means that massive provisions that were wildly popular across the political spectrum will also need to be cut. They don't have the revenue to pay for it, right? And one of the main things that's now cut is paid family and medical leave. The initial proposal from Biden's Build Back Better agenda was 12 weeks of paid family leave. Who doesn't want paid family leave? What Democratic voter thinks that paid family leave is an awful provision to pass? Very small percentage. So the constituents want it. I would argue that Americans across the political spectrum want it. I mean, you look at polling and you see that three fourths of Americans find it to be a favorable provision. But it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, paid family leave is something that corporations do not want. Paid medical leave, something corporations do not want. And these are corporations that do a lot of political campaigning, a lot of lobbying, I should say, a lot of money being infused into these political campaigns of Democratic lawmakers. And so it's not so surprising that it started off as a 12 week program, then got paired back to four weeks, and now it's just completely cut from the bill. So the question is, why? Why? What kind of excuse are we hearing from Senator Joe Manchin? Senator Kirsten Sinema, another corporatist in the Senate, doesn't feel like she needs to spend even a second explaining to you why she's against it, why she's gone out of her way to defeat the popular provisions in this legislation. But Manchin tries, he tries. So let's hear what his excuse is. Paid leave, are you still talking to Senator Gillibrand? I'm Senator talking to everybody, but I've been very clear. To expand social programs when you have trust funds that aren't solvent, they're going insolvent. I can't explain that, it doesn't make sense to me. I wanna work with everyone as long as we can start paying for things. That's all, I can't put this burden on my grandchildren. I've got 10 grandchildren and, and I'll be, I just can't do it. Now in 2017, when Trump succeeded in passing his tax cuts for the rich, the tax cuts that cost this country $2 trillion over the next decade, they didn't have anything in place to ensure that the tax cuts would be paid for, that there would be something to offset the new tax policy. And at the time, Senator Joe Manchin, along with Kirsten Sinema, were against the Trump era tax cuts. They claimed they wanted to reverse it, but once they had the opportunity to do so, they served as an obstacle to that. So while Joe Manchin would have you believe, or he would really like to have you believe, that he's concerned about balancing the budget. You know, his actions don't indicate that. Because Democrats who I think have been incredibly weak but have been negotiating on good faith had all these pay fors in the budget reconciliation bill, had all these different opportunities to ensure that we get the wealthiest people in this country to pay their fair share so we can fund robust social safety net programs that improve Americans lives. Manchin knows that, Manchin knows that there were pay fors, but he stood in the way of those provisions that would raise the revenue necessary for incredibly important and popular provisions like paid family and medical leave. That's what the reality is. His corporate donors don't like it. They do not want to worry about their workers having a family and needing a little bit of time off. They don't wanna have to worry about paying for that time off. The only thing that the corporations have salivated over throughout this entire process is the budget, uh, the uh, bipartisan infrastructure deal, which has all sorts of corporate handouts for them, which gives them an opportunity to privatize public infrastructure. That's why they want it so, so bad. And then in the budget reconciliation bill, to be fair, universal pre-K remains untouched. But you guys know why that is. Because universal pre-K means mothers will have some place to drop off their kids so they can go back to the mines, go back to work. There's a labor shortage, everyone. We gotta get the women back to work. We gotta get the parents back to work. All right, fine, universal pre-K. At least there's a benefit to us, the corporations that do not wanna pay their fair share in taxes. But other than that, other than that, what is left in the budget reconciliation bill? So far, the Medicare expansion is under great threat by corporate Democrats. 
Bernie Sanders says that he insists on keeping the expansion in the final bill. We don't know what the outcome will be. But if I had to bet my money on it, it'll either be completely paired back to something unrecognizable or it won't even exist in the final version of the bill. Paid family leave, gone. Two years free community college, gone. Funding for elder care, scaled back considerably. I mean, think about the priorities here. Don't raise taxes on the rich, make sure you cut the programs that actually benefit workers. That's what's happening. That's who Manchin is, that's who Cinema is. That's what congressional lawmakers overall happen to be if they take corporate money and if they're invested in individual stocks. It's all about narcissism and self interest and it's because the incentives are set up that way. And honestly, at this point, the only way I see this country moving forward in a positive direction is if we take a look back at what worked in the past. The only time we've accomplished anything positive in this country, anything robust, anything that really fundamentally changed the power dynamic and the power structure in this country was during FDR. FDR had all sorts of flaws. I'm not trying to, you know, Put him up on a pedestal as this perfect president. Uh, there were definitely issues with African Americans being left out of the economic programs that proved to be so successful for white Americans in this country. But there's a reason why FDR passed the New Deal, passed all these labor policies that came along with it. It's because there was labor power in the country. We're all atomized, we're all divided, we're all in our little caves. You know, fighting with each other on Twitter, going after these ridiculous manufactured culture wars, allowing right wingers to bait us into stupid discussions about Dr. Seuss and Mr. Potato. Who cares? Who cares? We need to build a broad coalition. We need to talk to our co workers. We need to organize our workplace. We need to build labor power in this country. End of story. That is the only answer. Okay, sitting back and hoping that lawmakers are gonna do the right thing under this system that incentivizes their greed, not gonna work. It's just not gonna work. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. We have history to look back on to see what worked and what didn't work. I think we have lots of case studies from recent history indicating what didn't work. It's about time that we start organizing and ensure that we actually threaten capital. That's the only way we get what we want. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.